Good morning and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending October 14th, 2022. Today I'm going to entitle this video, Mixed Inflation Data Brings More Market Gyrations. And that's what you saw this week, uh, core producer price index that came out Wednesday. That was roughly flat, slight tick up uh, month over month. Uh, and then you had core consumer uh, price index come out on Thursday. And that was roughly flat month over month. And something, uh, remember the CPI data though is uh, pretty lagging because it includes uh, rents, which are signed months and months ago. So uh, I think it's less an indication of what's happening in the real economy uh, than things like import prices, which we got on Friday, import and export prices. Import prices down for the third month in a row. Um, part of that has to do with the strong dollar, right? Uh, same with export prices down for the third month in a row as well. So that was, you know, a mixed bag, you know, flat core uh, or flat producer price index, accelerating consumer price index, although that's more lagging. And then uh, the export and import prices were down. And the consumer sentiment that came out a tick higher than uh, last month. So that's somewhat of a positive for the economy. Uh, and the expectations for rate hikes did shift a little bit over the week. We saw now have uh, an increasing likely, ch likely chance of a 75 basis point hike in November, as well as December. So this is December, so 150, 450 to 475, we're at 300 to 325 now. So 150 basis point increase between now and the end of the year. And then you move to February, and there's now an increasing likely chance of another 25 basis point uh, hike. So that's why you saw really the market sell off. But if you look at it, let's pivot over to the major indexes real quick. And it was a down week. So this was Friday. Uh, and we, so we closed modestly down, not below the lows from last week, which was interesting. Um, yeah, there you go. Or two weeks ago, excuse me. So, you know, we found the 50% retrace on the S&P this week as we gapped lower on the inflation data on, on Thursday and reversed. We reversed that, um, that move on Friday. But I'll have to show you this. Look at these big moves up, big moves down, big moves up, big moves down. When you're at, you have a long trend one way, which we do for the past year, down. And you get market gyrations like this, that often means the market's trying to uh, find a bottom. And look at the MACD here. You're getting a divergence, right? You made a lower low, but on the MACD, you got a higher low. So that's interesting of a note. And I want to pivot over to the dollar as well. Here's UEP. And this is having the same thing with the other way, right? Long move in the dollar. And this is beginning to try to roll over. Um, now, Everything's still TBD. Uh, you just because there are signs doesn't mean that that ultimately will lead to uh, a reversal. Uh, but if you are, or if you want to be bullish, that's better than not seeing any signs, right? It's seeing grinds lower. Uh, that typically is what happened in, in in a down market. You just get kind of uh, grinding lower and. The fact that we're getting this volatility and some divergence uh, is starting to add up to, once again, signs of a market reversal. Another interesting note here is look at the, the VIX. The VIX closed well off the highs of the, the week uh, and didn't close down for the week, but certainly was you know closed near the low end of, uh, of the candle this week. So is it trying to make a high here? We shall see but something uh, definitely to, to keep an eye on. I'm also looking at the VVIX. Uh, if this starts to tick up, you see this starting to grind higher. That's actually a positive for the market. See how this was basically in a, a long sideways to uptrend uh, when the market was, was positive. Uh, and then it was in a downtrend, right? A downtrend through the market sell off basically. But you had that low in, in June, July timeframe, 
and this has been grinding higher. If this can break out to the upside, that would certainly be helpful uh, for the market as a whole. So that's uh, that's one thing uh, I'm definitely watching. Um, let's go to the IWM to the SPY that continues to be strong. A lot of it has to do with the dollar. Um, the fact that you know the S&P is highly exposed to a strong dollar where the IWM small caps typically more domestically focused uh, aren't nearly as much so um, this would also be an indicator that the dollar is topping too if you get if you get a rollover um, so growth versus value growth versus value uh, that continues to um, continues downtrend and I think despite out of everything this will continue to, to grind lower same with arc look at arc new low off 70 plus percent from the highs very reminiscent of the financial or not the financial crisis the, the tech bubble 1.0 um took like the 10 year that also breached four percent on the close for the first time in years and uh it's a it's an important number uh and something the treasury is is, is i'm sure watching uh, you have the IMF getting together this week for um, you know meetings in Washington, and so that's the central banks around the world getting together and discussing kind of the global plumbing uh, that's been pushing you know the euro down, uh, interest rates up uh, across the board, making uh, Europe respond. That's just starting to, to show signs of a bit of a trend change. Here's the MACD. You know, that big move and then consolidation since. Uh, but really the problem is the yen, uh, right? The yen just powering to new lows. Uh, and in order for them to to support their currency, they need to sell assets. And mainly they own treasuries. That's why you're seeing those treasury rates go higher. Same with uh, SHY that was grinding lower. Looking for a bottom here, but still not finding it, right? They try to find it here. Uh, was making a divergence and then failed. So not all divergences turn into a durable bottom, but you typically see them if you are going to see a bottom. So uh, I'm definitely watching that uh, on the SHY uh, and, and a potential reversal in the yen because I think that will be um, the first big indicator that the, the Fed is going to, to pivot. Um, let's look at gold. Gold had a rough week after a very strong previous week, right? This was a big move up. We, we held it. Uh, even the wet Friday was uh, negative. Uh, we gapped down lower on Monday and pretty much grind, grinded lower uh, throughout the week. So definitely not a bullish week for gold itself, but didn't break the lows. Um, so that's important. And these are some very important um, uh, these are some important support levels uh, down here on gold. So uh, definitely would if you if you want to see gold reverse, you're you're gonna to want to see that uh, that bottom uh, hold from two weeks ago. Um, but overall, it was a roughly uh, bearish week. Here's the socks. I wanted to touch on this uh, because semiconductors are very important, um, and this is the the big thing weighing I think on uh, just the market as a whole with the growth sector is the protectionist policies coming out of the Biden administration when it comes to semiconductors, very very aggressive. Um, basically, if you work in the high tech uh, chip manufacturing industry in China, uh, and you're a U.S. citizen, you need to stop immediately, and come home. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose your citizenship. So, uh, you know, very very strong rhetoric coming out of, uh, or, or strong action really uh, coming out of the Biden administration uh, that's going to weigh on the semiconductor space. So you see that with uh, all the semiconductor stocks, ASML, AMAT, um, anything that's uh, look at TSM, there's TSMC, uh, all of these just grinding, grinding lower. Uh, and this is, this is major for the industry. Um, so I think this is uh, going to weigh on uh, the growth sector for a little while as uh, Everyone's trying to figure out where exactly what this means for the the chip space and all the chip companies, from the chip equipment companies to the actual um, you know design companies. Remember AMD, that's ADM. AMD, uh, they design their own chips, but they have TSMC manufacturing. They don't have uh, their own foundries. So this becomes an issue. Um, and you know how much can they sell in to China? All of that is. Uh, 
a problem uh, for the sector as a whole. So I wanted to highlight that because it is a very big deal. Uh, and I don't think talked about nearly enough uh, on the mainstream uh, news uh, when it comes to, to, to finance. So I just wanted to uh, touch on that. Uh, but overall, once again, um, modestly bearish week. Uh, you have uh, more, uh, more hawkish Fed priced in. Um, but the question is, will the Fed fall through with that, with the, uh, with the issues that are happening in the sovereign debt markets around the world? Uh, and I think the IMF meeting this week is uh, under discussed. Uh, but we'll find out next week. Next week is option next week. Uh, a lot more market gyrations uh, potentially. Uh, and then we start getting into the holiday season um, coming up soon, which typically, typically does bring um, kind of a low volume float uh, to the market. And that could just simply be the catalyst seasonality, uh, bringing in a relief rally that, you know, may not hold. Um, but you know, maybe similar to the uh, June to August rally. I think that's certainly a possibility. And then we roll over and go lower. That you have to be open to all possibilities. You have to really call balls and strikes and not be tied to one bullish or bearish view uh, and allow emotions to take over and just kind of uh, watch uh, the signals uh, that are in the market right now. Well, I appreciate you all tuning in to this channel and subscribing. And a reminder that the contents of this video are provided for educational purposes only. It should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to participate in investment strategy. The views are my own, do not represent those of KP Financial or those associated. Thank you all and have a wonderful weekend.